Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. I want to talk to you about the power of the Word of God. I'm going to show you eight benefits that will begin to manifest in your life when you become committed to the Word of God. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some anointed worship. And then we're getting into this message. Here's Steve. Overtaking my heart You take me in Finding peace again Fear is lost in all you are And I would give the word to tell your story I know that you've called me I know that you've called me I've lost myself from good within your promise And I won't hide it I won't hide it Jesus, I believe in you And I would go To the ends of the earth for you alone are the son of god and all the world will see that you are god that you are god It's truly time to know the Word of God like never before. I've heard of believers who were imprisoned for their faith and they were still able to devote to the Word of God on a daily basis because they memorized large portions of Scripture. It's time to not only read the Word, but to memorize the Word, to quote the Word, to devote your life to the Word, to live the Word, to go deeper in the Word than ever before. As your spiritual roots go deeper into the Word, there will be strength to your spirit life. I think about the sad reality that many believers don't actually devote to the Word of God on a daily basis. Think about this. We say that the Bible is the Word of God. We say that the Bible is God's communication with us, yet we neglect it, we take it for granted, and we miss the opportunity to connect with God in greater ways because many of us do not remain consistent in devotion to the Word of God. Shouldn't believers know the Word of God better than anyone? Shouldn't the Christian know the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation? Shouldn't the believer be so devoted to the Word of God that they can teach the Word of God? I've had conversations with Muslims who know the Quran better than some Christians know the Bible. I've had conversations with atheists who know the Word of God better than some Christians know the Word of God. The reality is, is that it's time to go deeper than ever before. It's time to read the Word, to study the Word, 
to meditate upon the word, to live and obey the word, to receive from the word and to declare that word to others. And as you do, as you become devoted to the word on a consistent day-by-day basis, then there are things that begin to manifest in your life. The power of the word begins to transform you. Here are eight benefits that will begin to manifest when you begin to become consistent in the word. Number one, you'll walk free from sin. Psalm 119.11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. When you know the word of God, you know what pleases and displeases him. Often we do things that displease God without even realizing it because we haven't known his word. But when you know his word, when you begin to study the scripture, you begin to see things in there that correct things in your nature, that confront things in your character. You begin to focus on the truths of Scripture and they begin to transform who you are and they break the power of sin from off of your life. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16-17 through 17 say, All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Think of the reality of the first temptation. When Eve was tempted in the Garden of Eden, the enemy confronted what? Genesis chapter 3, verse 4, You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. In other words, the serpent contradicted the word of God. When the enemy wants to get you to fall into a temptation, the first thing he will come for in your life is the word. The Word of God is your first line of defense. The Word of God is that light that begins to shine in you, that causes you to see all of those things in your life that need to be corrected. In fact, as the Word of God begins to take root in your heart, the sin that once tempted you will begin to disgust you. Not only will you be able to overcome that temptation, but you'll receive new desires in the Spirit that will cause you to desire things of God. You know, if you were to go to the doctor and explain to the doctor that you weren't feeling well, the first thing he or she would do is run down a checklist of the basics. Are you sleeping? Are you eating? Are you exercising? Are you taking care of yourself? And if you said, in fact, I'm not really eating that often, I'm not really sleeping that often, I don't really exercise. I don't really take care of myself. The doctor would send you away before diagnosing you with anything, telling you that you need to take care of the basics first. You see, we often want a quick fix. We want to say, Pastor, pray for me, or Pastor, lay hands on me. If you're not devoting to the Word, you're not even covering the basics. So why go and seek a prophetic word? Why go and seek counsel? Why go and seek deliverance? If you're not even necessarily living by God's holy standard, you want deliverance, you want clarity, you want freedom, it's time to start knowing and living by the word. Number two, you'll prosper in all you do. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Now, to be clear here, I don't teach what's normally called the prosperity gospel. The prosperity gospel is the belief that says, I serve God for what I can get from Him. The true gospel tells us that God gave His life for us, and therefore we must give our lives to Him. Biblical prosperity is simply when God meets your needs and there's enough left over to be able to be a blessing to others. It's being able to obey the commandments of generosity in the scripture. How am I supposed to take care of the orphan and the widow? How am I supposed to take care of the less fortunate? How am I supposed to feed the hungry if I don't have the resources to do it? So when you walk in the word of God, you will experience biblical prosperity. No, not everyone will be a millionaire. Not everyone will be driving fancy cars. And no, I'm not saying that there won't be any trials in this life. In fact, Jesus said, in this world, you'll have tribulation. And that's a fact of the Christian life. You are going to be persecuted. There will be trials. There will be heartache. Not everything is going to go the way you want it to go. Nevertheless, 
When you obey the word of God, it invites biblical prosperity to take place in your life. Number three, you'll walk in truth, free from self-deception. Think of all the things going on in the world. The political mindsets, the cultural mindsets, the family thought patterns, superstitious thinking from religious institutions. We are being bombarded by information and so-called facts from all different angles, and it's very difficult to catch your breath. It's very difficult to find your bearings and know what is truth. But when you know the word of God, you will walk in absolute truth. You'll not walk in confusion. You'll not walk wondering who is right, who is wrong. You'll be focused on Jesus, planted in his word, and strengthened by the truth of that word. James chapter 1, verse 22 says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. So if I don't know the word, I can be deceived. If I don't live the word, I can be deceived. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. In other words, we have certain thought patterns within our own human nature that are broken by the word of God. And the word of God goes forth like a hammer, smashing to bits those mindsets of cultural, secular, demonic realities. The things we tell ourselves are sometimes untrue. We must not be swayed by every whim. Some people believe everything they see on the internet. Some people believe every story, every post, every idea, every thought, every interpretation of scripture, and they're tossed about why? Because they're not anchored in the truth, when you live in the word of God, you're not only free from self-deception. And by the way, there is no deception as dark as self-deception. But when you live by the word of God, you are free from that self-deception and you are also free from demonic deception. 1 Timothy 4.1 says, Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last time some will turn away from the true faith, they will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. Number four, you'll walk in faith. Romans 10, 17 says, so faith comes from hearing, that is hearing the good news about Christ. This verse, first and foremost, is about salvation. And it's saying that those who hear the gospel message of salvation are given the faith to believe that message. So while Romans 10, 17 does not necessarily have universal application, it does have a universal principle that we see in there. Namely, that the word will give you the faith for what it promises. I want you to hear me now. The word will give you the faith for what it promises. When the word promises healing, you have faith for healing. When the word promises you deliverance, you have faith for deliverance. When the word promises you a spiritual gift, you have faith for that spiritual gift. The word will give you the faith for what it promises. If you're lacking in faith, if your doubts are surrounding and overwhelming you, it's time to get back in the word. It's time to begin to get back into those truths that spark that spirit-filled inspiration that keep you focused on Jesus. Number five, you'll walk in wisdom. Psalm 119, 130 says, The teaching of your word gives light, so even the simple can understand. You see, God speaks through His Holy Spirit, God speaks through His word, and God speaks through wisdom. Sometimes it's not a voice from heaven. Sometimes the sky doesn't split open, and you don't see heavenly visions, and you don't hear an audible, booming voice instructing you on what you should do. And sometimes while searching the scripture, you may not find exactly what it is you're looking for as far as specific directions for your life. That is where the voice of wisdom comes in. Wisdom is one of the ways that God speaks to us. And wisdom comes as you become familiar with the word of God. Wisdom builds ministries. Wisdom builds families. Wisdom builds livelihoods. Wisdom builds you spiritually. Wisdom comes when I begin to walk in the Word of God and know the Word of God. Number six, you'll walk in peace. Psalm 119, 165 says, Great peace have they which love thy law, or love your word, 
and nothing shall offend them. It's very difficult to offend people of the word. Are you easily offended? Time to get in the word. Are you hyper-emotional, hypersensitive? Time to get in the word. Do you know why people are so easily offended when they're not in the word? It's because when they're not in the word, they don't have a revelation of who they are in Christ. When they're not in the word, they're not aware of the fact that they're planted in him. And when they're not aware of the fact that they're planted in him, they're moved by anything and everything around them and they lack that peace. When people criticize them, they're moved emotionally. Why? Because they don't have the confidence that comes from knowing the word of God when it tells us that we belong to him. It's difficult to offend people of the word. The word brings perfect peace. When I get in the word, there can be chaos all around me, but I have perfect peace within my heart. Perfect peace when you get in the word. If you're constantly experiencing emotional turmoil, ups and downs, it's time to get planted in the word. Number seven, you'll walk in strength. Psalm 119, 28 says, My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. My soul melts or it collapses. In other words, the heaviness and the weight of the world and responsibilities and struggles and tasks and that busyness that comes in our lives, the weight of that world begins to press down on us. And if we don't have the word in us, the soul will collapse. My soul melteth for heaviness. In other words, the pressure coming against me is causing me internally to collapse. If you feel like you're collapsing internally, it's because there needs to be a more solid, sure foundation within you. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. If there's no substance in you, you'll crumble under pressure. I want to say that again. That's for someone. If there's no substance in you, you'll crumble under pressure. If you're spiritually hollow, you can't carry the weight. If you're spiritually hollow, you can't carry the weight. The Word of God gives strength to your being. The Word of God causes you to be able to withstand the pressures coming from all around you. It gives you that spiritual strength, that divine energy to continue on in the will of God. And finally, number eight, and this one I really want you to, to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. I know you want Him to speak to you through all of them, but I really want to pause and encourage you to ask the Holy Spirit to help you to receive this truth. This is important. Number eight, you'll walk in vulnerability toward God. Hebrews 4.12 says this, For the Word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. This is so key. You'll walk in vulnerability toward God. Now, when I read this verse, it struck me because when I read that it will expose our innermost thoughts and desires, I thought, exposed to who? Does not God know every thought? Does not God know everything happening within us? He can see right through us. He can see into the mind. He can see into the soul. He can see everything happening internally. So when the Word of God tells us that our innermost thoughts and desires are exposed, who does it expose it to? The Word of God exposes your innermost thoughts and desires to you. It shows you mindsets. It shows you emotions. It shows you character flaws. It makes you say, Lord, examine me and remove this from me. I think about Isaiah the prophet in Isaiah 6. Think about this. Isaiah the prophet sees a beautiful heavenly vision before him. And though he can see the glory of God, what does he say? Woe is me, for I am undone. Isn't it interesting that in the midst of this glorious heavenly encounter, Isaiah the prophet becomes focused on himself? Now, why is that? Here's the reality. When the Word of God begins to shine light on you, things become exposed. 
motives in your heart, unforgiveness you're carrying, things that need to be more Christ-like. It becomes exposed. And as you pour over the Word, you, you'll find yourself repenting as you read. You'll find yourself reading things and say, Lord, I do that and I'm so sorry. Or, oh Lord, I didn't know you disliked this. Or, Lord, that wasn't even necessarily a sin. It was just a way of thinking that was so wrong in me. And the Word of God is like that light that shines within us, like Isaiah the prophet, who stood before the glory of God and felt exposed. Woe is me, for I'm undone. I'm undone, I'm undone. In the same way, as you read the Word, you too will cry, I'm undone. Here's where I'm flawed. And this is the beautiful part about it. God doesn't expose things to shame you. God exposes things to correct you and save you. God exposes things to rescue you. God exposes things to spare you. And as you read the word, your heart will open. That sharp two-edged sword will cut between soul and spirit. It will cut between joint and marrow. It will expose your innermost thoughts and desires to you. And as you see them, you can cry as it says in Psalms, Search me, O God. Search me. Examine my heart. Remove anything that is not of you. And this should be the cry as you read the word. Now you may feel in these moments, as you begin to go deeper in the word, that God is distancing himself from you. Because here's what happens. Here's what happens. And this is not for everyone. This is for those who've gone to deep places. You'll be reading the word, and suddenly you're transformed. And then you begin to, how shall I say this? You become, your standards go higher. And when your standards go higher, the areas you compromised in a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, that didn't seem like that big of a deal to you then, begin to become something that causes you to cry out, I'm undone. Old habits, old thoughts, old ways. You used to let them go, and now you're more frustrated with yourself. Now you're more anguished over your mistakes. Now you're becoming like Paul who said, who, who, will, who will rescue me? Oh, wretched man that I am. Who's going to redeem me? Who's going to take care of me? Who's going to help me with this? You become anguished, deeply anguished at your own flaws. And there's a redemptive side to this. It's not all wallowing in misery. But when God's light shines on you, you become anguished at what's in your heart. And the Word of God reveals this and you become vulnerable toward God. He, he, he shines that light in you and he starts to look and sing all, he starts to see all your secrets. He starts to see all your thoughts. He could see them before, but now you're aware of that and it causes you to be vulnerable. It causes you to be real, open with God, honest with God. In those moments, it's important to remember this, that when that light shines on you and when you feel more anguished over your humanity, that's a sign of spiritual growth, not a sign that God is distancing himself from you. God isn't distancing himself. He's drawing you closer. And the light of his word is revealing things. The closer the glory comes, the closer that light comes, the more detailed the exposure and the more anguished in our hearts we become over the flaws in our humanity. But that's what the word of God does. It makes you walk in vulnerability toward God. So number one, you'll walk free from sin. Number two, you'll prosper in all you do. Number three, you'll walk in truth. Number four, you'll walk in faith. Number five, you'll walk in wisdom. Number six, you'll walk in peace. Number seven, you'll walk in strength. Number eight, you'll walk in vulnerability toward God, that He might do it. Lord, give us a desire for Your Word. Lord, give us a desire for your word. Every day, Lord, every day, let us pour over that word and let it be poured out over us. 
Let us become one with your word. Let us not just know it and memorize it. Let us live it, Holy Spirit. Come upon your people now and stir those spiritual desires as only you can. And cause us to become people of the word deeper than ever before. Lord, that we wouldn't neglect any portion, but that we would reverence your word from Genesis to Revelation, I pray in Jesus' name. Give us a passion for your word. Let it be lit on fire and cause us to carry it to the nations of the world. Say this out loud. Say, Lord, make me a person of the word. Say it out loud. Say, Lord, make me a person of the word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, amen. That is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you like information on how you can join our online church, just go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Now to the comments. These comments come from a video titled, The Healing Power of the Holy Spirit, in parentheses, Testimonies. And these are some healing testimonies that were taken from a service that we did in Southern California. Powerful move of the Holy Spirit. Make sure you look that up, the healing power of the Holy Spirit. You can find it on any of the platforms that you're watching us on. And while you're at it, be sure to follow and subscribe on whatever platform you watch us on. If you're watching on YouTube, remember that when you click subscribe, you also should click that notification bell so that you can be alerted when we release new content. So that's where I'm reading the comments from, again, the healing power of the Holy Spirit. If you'd like me to potentially read your comment on one of the editions of Spirit Church, then make sure you're commenting on all of our content and I may read your comments on one of those episodes. The first commenter says, and this is Serena Chu, thank you for spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ and setting people free from infirmities and pain. Keep up the great work. Well, Serena, you and I both know it's the Lord who does it we're just his servants. Emma Psalms 28, 7 says, Praise God for all these testimonies. Tracy writes, Praise Jesus. Thank you, David, for your service. You are a wonderful man of God. Well, Tracy, I consider myself just the mailman. You, the one receiving the message from the king, you're the important one. I'm just offering the service. It's God working through his ministry. Jessica Padilla writes, My sister Janet told me about her experience during this service. Seeing her face in the videos as she was praising the Lord brought tears of joy to my eyes. God is real and He is so good. Well, thank you for that comment, Jessica. Lives are being transformed all around the world. And I want to invite you, this one watching right now, if you're watching me, I want to invite you to become a part of our ministry by becoming a monthly ministry supporter. When you sign up to become a monthly sponsor, you're helping us to offer this content. You're helping us to do the live streams. You're helping us to do the events all around the world. That's what these people are commenting on. You're helping to sustain the Holy Spirit School where we train leaders for free, no charge. We don't charge for the media. We don't charge for the live streams. We don't charge for the events. We don't charge for the Holy Spirit School. It's all offered free. Freely we receive, so freely we give. So how do we do it? We do it the biblical way. Free will offerings from God's people. That's you. So I want to invite you to be a part of this. When you sign up to become a monthly partner for $10 or more a month, you will get a beautiful Dove lapel pin that you can wear to show your support of this ministry. You get 10% off all ministry apparel. You'll get event seat reservations for any of the events that you want to attend. You'll get a monthly update that's exclusive for our partners and you'll have access to the monthly Zoom calls with me and Stephen Moctezuma, where we interact with you, get to know you. We give you behind the scenes update on the ministry. You're the first to know any ministry announcements. We announce it first for our partners before we go public with it. But most importantly, you're helping us to see souls saved, lives transformed, people healed, people delivered. Think about that. People's lives transformed. You get all of those benefits and you help us to fund all those different aspects of ministry. There's nowhere better to invest your support than a monthly donation to this ministry. So I want to challenge you now. Okay, here's, here's a challenge for you. I know we have Netflix. 
I know we have gym passes. I know we have memberships to this and to that. I know we spend money on different things. I want you to consider, what do I spend $10 a month on? What do I spend $10 on one time even? And I want you to consider this. The gospel is worth your support. And this ministry is very good soil. We're very efficient with what you give. And I want you to be a part of this. So go right now to become a partner. DavidHernandezMinistries.com slash partner. If you sign up for $30 or more a month, you get all of those benefits. Plus you get to select a signed book. If you sign up for $100 or more a month, you get all of those benefits. Plus your discount doubles to 20% and you get all four books in the book selection. But go and do that right now. If you can't partner monthly, give a one-time gift. Help us continue to take the gospel all around the world. This is how we do it right here, right now. Someone like you, this is how it's done. Let God touch your heart. Obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Step out in faith and be a part of what we're doing. To become a partner, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. To give a one-time gift, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Whatever you decide, please do it right now. And that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.